F1 has outgrown Monaco, and to be honest, it happened a few years ago now. I'm not talking about the place itself, but actually the size of the circuit. And it's not even the track's fault. It's all down to how big a modern Formula 1 car has become. I'm confident in saying that most Formula 1 fans don't actually like Monaco. And again, I'm talking about the actual track and specifically the racing, and not the event itself. The glitz, the glamour. The event is still one of the most prestigious ones with celebrities out in force who have watched all of the races, no doubt arriving on their expensive boats as well. 2022 had just 12 overtakes, but even some of those were aided by driving mistakes. It did start as a wet race though, so we have to take that into consideration, but 2021 had just one on-track overtake, and that was on the opening lap by Mick Schumacher. All other positions, gained or lost, were the result of pit stops or cars retiring. It's pretty damning stuff. Rather than going back over the last few years though and giving you all the overtaking stats, know this. Monaco has averaged 10 overtakes per race for the last decade, and that's thanks to research from Bonus Code Bets. It's not a track that's known for its overtaking, and as such the races tend to be a bit of a procession. We always say the race is never won on the Saturday during qualifying, but to some extent that isn't true at Monaco. Qualifying is the most important thing around here probably more than any other circuit due to how important track position actually is. In 2019, we had Lewis winning the race on very used tyres, but a charging Max Verstappen, despite being much quicker, couldn't get past. And it was the same in 2022 when Perez, Leclerc, Sainz, Max were all in a bit of a status quo. The truth is you need a car that is clearly much quicker, hopefully on traction, either because it's a superior car or you have a tyre advantage, and even then, you need the other car to play ball, so to speak. Trying to send one into the hairpin will only work if the other car is willing to accept the feat. If the other car goes defensive everywhere, it's going to be a tough day. Formula 1 cars are bigger than they used to be, and heavier. They're not the nimble machines that weave their way through the Monaco streets in the 70s and 80s. A modern Formula 1 car is 5.5 meters long and 2 meters wide. And in this instance, it's not just the width, as you would think, that's the problem, but actually the length. The longer cars make them less nimble around these streets, especially on the tight corners. And they're much heavier as well. Just shy of 800 kilograms now at 798. That's up from 595 kilograms in the early 2000s. That's 200 kilograms more. That's the weight of a piano. None of this makes for a good time around a track like Monaco. Modern Formula 1 cars just aren't suited to this circuit anymore. It's not going to change anytime soon though. Formula 1 cars keep getting heavier as we have more and more of a focus on energy recovery. And those systems, as well as batteries, they weigh a lot. Speaking of batteries, Formula E just raced around Monaco and the racing was fantastic. A modern Formula E car is around 5 meters long, so a fair bit shorter than a Formula 1 car and around 1.7 meters wide. So again, much smaller overall, and it makes a big difference when it comes to overtaking. Of course, the Formula E cars are designed to be run on tight street circuits. It's kind of their whole thing. And while they do need heavy batteries, they aren't also running an internal combustion engine like a Formula One car, nor do they reach the speed of a Formula One car. When it comes to overtaking though, they deliver. And that's ultimately what matters, right? Despite all of what I've said, there is zero doubt the skill that a driver needs to race around 70-odd laps of Monaco without making a mistake. One mistake around here usually means you've hit the wall, as many drivers will attest to over the years. It's an incredible track for driver skill and precision. That is not in doubt, but not a good track for racing. There have been lots of suggestions over the years on how to change the track layout, and for obvious reasons, the options are fairly limited as it's a street circuit running over public roads. Gary Anderson made a suggestion on the race website, and this image is courtesy of them. He suggested extending the track just after the hairpin and before the tunnel. It would mean there would be potential for another high speed part of the track and maybe even another DRS zone, but I'm confident there are reasons this wouldn't work in reality, safety likely being one. In this layout, drivers would already be flat out when they reach the tunnel, but currently they are accelerating through it, and I imagine safety and runoffs wouldn't allow for something like that. Growing up, I never looked forward to the Monaco Grand Prix. I'd look forward to the Formula One all week, and I'd go up to my room to turn on the race, and then I remembered it was Monaco, and I'd just lose interest. 
I'd still watch the race, but I've never quite lost that anticlimactic feeling of knowing a race is coming up and getting excited while also realizing it's Monaco and wishing it wasn't. Just a caveat, we've had some good Monaco races over the years, although they are few and far between. But people say it should remain on the calendar because it's historic. But Formula One doesn't care about historic races. If it did, we wouldn't be having conversations about Spa losing its place and gaining races such as Miami and Las Vegas. History doesn't matter one little bit to Formula One. It's all about money. And, well, Monaco has plenty of that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, why not like and subscribe? And why not leave a comment to let me know how you feel about the Monaco Grand Prix? I'll see you next time.